Hello everyone and welcome back to another In the Greenhouse, the behind the scenes series with Siri, talking about Siri's personal life, uh, the, se the series that we run, the community, and also a little bit about the natural world. And last time I touched on some of the early questions about the natural world, uh, things that had to do with being a biologist and some of my favorite wildlife experiences. I hope that you guys have shared some of your own wildlife experiences with me, and if you could, just go ahead and leave some in the comments if you've got some new ones. Hopefully they're good ones, though if you were my mother, and taking a walk as a child and stepping straight on top of a copperhead head and having to stand there until help came back with the snake thrashing under you, maybe they aren't always positive experiences, so maybe you've had a few of those too. But I'm going to continue the little bit of work we've been doing. After watching so many of the golden dragonflies flit away right under my little net. Oh, speaking of flitting away under a net. Come here. Uh, eh, gotcha. That's a very slow green butterfly though, so I shouldn't be too impressed. But we are getting much closer. We're only a few dollars away from being able to afford the fancy net. So hopefully we'll get that this time. Also, look at how many flowers are on these blazing ferns. I love it. And I've got a few more biology and animal related questions. One of which is a very interesting question I'm excited to answer. What is the most underrated animal and plant and why? And that's kind of tricky because that could change on uh, context and depending on what I'm thinking about. But I would have to say that I feel like one of the most underrated animals that I know of is actually snakes. Snakes are an exceptionally important part of the ecosystem. They are pretty amazing. Ah, I missed it. Oh, I got that spider. Yay! Ooh, look, we're getting so close. Snakes, in my opinion, are a very underrated part of the ecosystem. Um, they're very, very, very important, uh, in my opinion, too. Um, I don't think people understand just how much snakes do in keeping down rodents, which keep down disease, which prevent agriculture from being hurt. And you know, after we get this net, we should start upgrading our nursery so we could sell things a little better. Like, I'm tired of looking at this wooden fence. And there's actually a really cute, cute fence and a little gate we can get. So we'll work on upgrading those things as we get more money. But um, I really think that people act way too aggressively to snakes. They have misunderstandings about snakes. Same thing with spiders. So I kind of champion the underdogs of the uh, animal world that way. I think that... Uh, even things like, um, like ants, people look at pest animals, uh, bats, I'm shocked, constantly shocked at how terrified people are of bats, which are very gentle, harmless little creatures. Um, there's a few, like the vampire bat, who might make a nick in cattle and, like, drink from cattle, but really, people think that, like, bats are aggressive or they're going to fly in their hair and make a nest, and those are just, those are just myths. What are some, in fact, that's actually something that I would love to address in this series, uh, if not in the other bigger series. What are some of the misunderstandings about animals that you think you've heard of? Some of the myths, some of the things where you're like, I don't know if this is true, but I heard that bats nest in your hair, or I don't know if this is true, but I heard that earwigs actually live in your ear. <gasps> Look, we have enough now! All right, let's do it! Yay, golden- what? No! <laughs> we need the previous upgrade first. Bummer! Okay. Well, at least we're only a thousand behind. Hmm. Oh, we gotta stick to our guns. Oh. <laughs> I'm weak. I'm weak and I wanted a new fence. And it looks great. I don't regret it. But yeah, so I kind of champion the underdog. I would love to hear some of the myths that people have heard about animals and say yay or nay on them and do research. So that would actually be really fun. I might actually do that in our Minecraft series. That would be a fun little side series to have on top of it. Um with the Siri and Tate and Lily researching uh, animal myths and facts, fact busting for animals. That would be really cool. Uh, and then underrated plant. I think grass. <laughs> That sounds ridiculous, but grass does so much. It provides a ton of food for the herbivores. I mean, think you always see see the animals, deer, bunnies, things like that, out eating grass. Cows turn, somehow, cows manage to turn grass into meat, milk, cheese, leather, hide, um, marrow. Like, they, they're pretty amazing. Herbivores are pretty amazing, but they need their grass to get there. So I think grass is really underrated. I watch people hilariously spend hours of their weekend fighting against grass in their front yard. 
And it kind of amuses me how people are like, how dare this blade of grass grow taller? But I've been told that apparently it's a guy thing. So not that I'm one to believe in girl and guy things, like being separate, but whatever. I'll, I'll just leave people to get excited about their, their grass and the height of the blades in their yard. Oh, our little nursery looks so much better with this little white fence. I'm very happy. So I think grass is pretty underrated. It's also very important to um, consider consider how much lives in grass. You have a whole bunch, like a whole ecosystem just in grass alone. There's not only grass, if you look really closely, there's other plants that are in there providing seeds and nutrients to the soil. Clover, uh, people really hate clover in their yards around here. And the thing is clover is one of uh, those plants like, like the bean family that actually returns nutrients to the soil. So it's a very important plant to have. Uh, it returns the nitrogen, it fixates the nitrogen back into the soil and the nitrogen is pulled out of the soil by other plants. Like when you grow a lot of corn in a cornfield, it's gonna eat up the nitrogen. That's what helps make it grow nice and strong and tall, but you need the nitrogen to return to the soil and that's why people will crop rotate and put in soybeans so that soybeans or legumes, the bean family, uh, can return that nitrogen, fixate it back into the soil. It's a fascinating process if you're me <laughs> and love studying that kind of stuff. Yay, we sold everything! So let's go ahead and get some more seeds planted. Oh no, bugs! Bugs, get off my fern, you bugs! Oh no, there's a little, little dead piece. There we go. Gingerly tending to my garden. It is very difficult to do a Let's Play of this series because I play it all the time in the background. While I reply to comments, while I'm doing work, while I'm processing videos, it's such a small file that it's not intensive on my computer at all. So I can play it whenever I want, and I play it abundantly. So let's throw a few more of these guys out here. Just what's a random. Ooh, let's get that guy propagated. I think, ooh, 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 blue spider, cobalt spider. We got it. We have a fancier net now, so that's good at least. Uh, so yeah, I really, I think that, like, the nitrogen fixating plants, clover, grass, etc., uh, really are underrated. People need to value them a little bit more, in my opinion. Snakes, spiders, champions of the underdogs. Uh, and then this is a really great question. If I could bring back one animal that's extinct from any time in history, what animal would it be and why? And, you know, I gave that a lot of thought. I was thinking passenger pigeons. I was thinking the dodo. I was thinking uh, some of the rare bird bird reptile crosses that used to occupy um, New Zealand. I was really giving it a lot of thought. And then I, I think if I could pick any of them, I would probably bring back one of the big dinosaurs, one of the big herbivorous dinosaurs, herbivore dinosaurs, because butterfly, 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 butterfly. Uh, one of the really big guys. And I, I, I mean, I can't even pick which one. You guys let me know. If you could bring back a dinosaur, which one would it be? I would pick a peaceful, huge one. Well, I say peaceful. I mean, it's not going to try to eat people. A, a huge one because I would want someone to walk up. Ooh, there's a new butterfly, new butterfly. Uh, Oh, we got it. Oh, it was just a common butterfly. Apparently, we already had that one. Yeah, it was a black moth. Um, because I would want people to walk in and look up and go, wow. I would want them to be swept off their feet. I would want it to be many, many times. I mean, an elephant does that to you. A whale does that to you. So I would want someone to be able to walk in. If I could only invest the time and resources in one type of, of, of animal to bring back, I would want it to be something that makes people stop and their jaws drop and their knees get weak with awe and uh, just amazement at what our planet has produced in the past and what it ha is capable of. Because I would hope that it would make them go, this creature this creature, once upon a time, shared the same planet that I'm on, that I came from. We share that, and we have been here. So, you know, it comes back to that educational thing, where if I could pick any creature, it would be one that would make someone turn around and go, maybe I need to care a little bit more about the environment before everything's gone. So, that's me. <laughs> that's getting a little bit more serious, but that's like the core of, of what I wish I could do with my life, is make people value the natural world and the environment quite a bit more. Um, so I would try to bring back somebody who could help do that. All right, let's see. How are you guys? <gasps> Yay! More seeds! I just tuck you over here. How are you doing? You are not fertilized. How am I doing on those seeds? Doing pretty good on those seeds. So let's just add a little bit of this and a little bit of that and see what happens. 
Also, why don't we go ahead... I'm gonna do it again, because I like you guys. Instagirl bomb! Let's do it! Oh, I spend all my stuff I save up when I'm playing off camera just to buy stuff while you guys are here. Because I like you. <laughs> Boom! Go, little guys, go! Vroom, vroom! Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Oh, look at that! Look at that! Oh, we really need to buy. Do I have enough money? Yeah, let's... We're gonna get some of the plant food. In fact, we'll get a couple doses of it. And just go hog wild. Making sure that they have tons and tons of flowers when they grow up. I'm so proud of you guys. There we go. We can start to afford little purchases like that now. We're getting there. Uh, oh, and then how many pets do I have? And will I show them off? And how are my birds doing? Well, I actually sized down on my pets. Uh, it, does anyone else here have crested geckos? Please raise your voice in the comments if anyone else has crested geckos or finches. I know we have a few other finch owners, but I don't know if anyone else has crested geckos. I have uh, now four crested geckos. I used to have nine. I actually rescued crested geckos. They're such an easy pet, but they live for 20 years. So people really underestimate uh, how long a crested gecko is going to need their care. And they get bored of them because a crested gecko doesn't really do a lot like a dog or a cat does or even a bird. Um, they, they kind of are a pet that you can totally forget about, and unfortunately that means people would forget to feed them. <laughs> so I rescued crested geckos for a long time and ended up with a lot of them. I ended up with too many. I ended up with uh, well over a dozen, and thankfully I was able to find new homes for everyone. I'm down to two that I might consider breeding because they're, they're of lines. I'm very picky about if you're going to breed your animals they need to be of high quality and you need to be of high quality and then i have two that i have rescued <gasps> it's a fuzzy seed i want to know what's gonna be in the fuzzy seed that's gonna be so exciting okay we're gonna sell you now so i've got uh let's see i have my four crested geckos i have the m tank mellow midna and maya and then i've got chic uh Sheik is actually a boy. <laughs> Sheik was named thinking Sheik was a girl. And Sheik's actually a boy. Sheik is named after the Zelda series. The Ocarina of Time specifically in case you guys are curious. And uh, so was Midna except she was uh, she was Twilight Princess. Uh, and then uh, if I will show them off. And I will. I'm actually thinking about doing. Uh, I'm trying to figure out what to do for the 5,000 subscriber special. For me... I always want to take the opportunity to use my my subscriber thank yous as a thank you because I don't really care how big the number is as much as I am so grateful for the opportunity to speak with that many people about the natural world and I want to thank everyone for the time that they take. Uh, your time is precious. Your time is invaluable and that you choose to spend it here with me and with the other members of our community is something that i cannot thank you guys enough for also i just noticed we are flat freaking broke now <laughs> so please everyone buy from our nursery buy from our nursery um and will i show how the bird's doing uh, they're doing really good. They're going through their molts right now. Ossii and Persimmon, the parents, are going through their yearly hard molt, so they look absolutely pathetic. Um, they're getting over an infection of scaly beak mites, which uh, apparently they've had since they were babies, and it just showed up when we moved because they got stressed and their immune system took a hit. But I got the medicine, and I applied it as per instructions and they are both perking right up which is great because scaly beak can kill birds and thankfully i caught it in time and i treated them and they're doing well Ossie Eye is the only one who still has a tiny bit of it it's clearing up he does not enjoy being plucked out of his cage wrapped up in a hand they never these finches do not like being held they're more wild than that they're not domesticated birds um <laughs> He does not like being taken out of his cage every night and have his beak liberally applied with some random medicine, but it's really been helping him. And then uh, I'm thinking of showing them off in that 5,000 special. We'll have to see. I don't know what to do. If you guys have any ideas for what you want to see for the 5,000 uh, thank yous, do you want to see my animals? Do you want to see me? Do you want to go hiking? Do you want me to play a game? Uh, whatever it is, I want it to be something where I can say thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for spending time with me. Uh, my life has changed to where you guys are my daily commitment. You are my my responsibility that I wake up to take care to every day in a good way. Um, you've changed my life. So how do I say thank you enough? That's what I hope these specials can be about. So I'm really flummoxed on like what to do for the next one other than say thank you a million million times from the bottom of my heart. Oh, and then finally, one last personal thing. 
What is my favorite thing to do other than gardening and gaming? And I think that's another question from Heather right there. So thank you very much, Heather. I know you've been with us for eons now. And what do I enjoy doing? Well, I actually game a lot and I garden a lot and I garden and gaming a lot. So once you take out, especially since I've shifted to um, trying to do full-time YouTubing, which is working out really well. And it's, I actually, I don't have a lot of subs. If you guys see how many subs I have, again, and I'm grateful for every single one of you, but when it comes to being a professional YouTuber, uh, trying to do this with under, under tens of thousands of subs and more than a million views is very presumptuous. But I'm just in a position where I, I can't really get a local job right now. We live in a very small town. The economy is very poor here. Um, and I'm in a position where we're going to move soon. So what's the point of like being hired to take on a more specialized position here when we're moving in a few months? And YouTube just managed to fit that little niche. So that's why I'm de dedicated to it. But that means it takes up a ton of my time. It takes up pretty much the whole day. But if I am not gardening and gaming, I am hiking, listening to my ebooks. Um, the mountains here are beautiful and I don't want to move away in a year and regret not having been out in them more. So I'm trying to hike a lot more. Uh, that doesn't mean I'm super athletic. I'm trying to get there, but it doesn't mean I'm super athletic because I tend to stop every few steps to look at the plants or study some animal tracks. So when I go hiking, it's not a very intensive exercise because I stop every few seconds to take pictures of plants or animal tracks or try to study a certain mushroom that I just found and identify it. Uh, I stop and smell the roses for sure. I smell the roses, I smell the grass, I smell the mushrooms, I smell the trees. I stop every few steps. That's ridiculous. Um, but other than gaming, I love making clay uh, art and clay crafts. Uh, I have actually started making a lot of clay foods and clay decorations for my cousins so that they can have clay food to play with their Barbies and their Legos and uh, their other little little toys. And I love making uh, jewelry. I'm working on some jewelry for my sister right now. Let's see, what else? I love collecting biological specimens, uh, like going on those hikes. Buy my bamboo, dang it, guys. I'm poor, buy my bamboo. It'll be discount bamboo if you keep that up. So I love collecting biological specimens. Maybe I could show some of those off for the 5,000 subscriber special. My favorite bio specimens, I have moss, uh, shells, bones, uh, plants, seeds, eggshells, rocks, tons and tons of different types of rocks through the entire house. Um, just my bio my biological specimens, I call them. So I've got quite a collection of those. I love adding to the collection. Um, but yeah, other than like gaming, hiking, gardening, reading, cooking, I love cooking. Uh, we're vegan, so I'm always trying out new delicious vegan meals. I love it. Um, taking care of my animals. I love cleaning, actually. I really love cleaning. I love everything being organized and tidy. So I clean a lot too. So those are some of my favorite things. <laughs> And as you can tell, they're kind of all related to the natural world, but uh, I'm going to try to get people to buy our little bamboo and work on taking care of some of the plants. And what are, what are your guys, like if you could bring back anything from, from ancient history, anything that's extinct, what would it be? And yeah, what do you guys think I should do for the 5,000 subscriber special? It'd really help if I could get some ideas. But thank you so much for joining us, everyone, and I will see you back here next time. Bye-bye.